Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Java with Josh. I am Josh Mason, your host today, and welcome to the Cyber and Security channel on YouTube. If you're joining us from LinkedIn or Twitter or Twitch, all of our interaction is going to happen on the Cyber and Security YouTube channel. That's where my moderators are, and that's where they will be passing questions to me. If you have questions, this is going to be me going through some labs today. Uh, we've been going through the penetration testing student labs from INE.com, part of the free starter pass. But if you do have questions along the way, throw a cue and then your question, only ask it once, please. So my moderator doesn't have to clear out any spam or you know, block you on YouTube. And then he will pass it to me over here on our discord and I will be able to answer your questions. I won't be watching chat. I'm going to take you through these labs. So if you are new to this whole 
tiny starter pass thing. If you're on YouTube, you can use our bot, throw in at exclamation point INE, and it'll send you a link to the starter pass, or you can just Google INE starter pass. It's going to then send you over to INE.com after you register for free. And we will get you going in there. Let me show you what it looks like. So I'm in my unprivileged account. We are going through penetration testing basics now. It is part of the penetration testing student. I'll walk through there. Learning path. There are many learning paths, part of the cybersecurity vertical, if you will, on INE.com. We also have networking, data science, cloud development, IT essentials. There's a whole lot of content on INE.com. Originally, a networking training organization. It's grown to now include a lot of penetration testing uh, and cybersecurity in general. We have um, BeardSec, who is also one of the instructors on INE building out some great engineering content for you. But there's everything from incident handling and response, threat hunting, digital forensics, malware analysis, web defense. I think Brian's course is in here. If we go looking right there, Introduction to Security Engineering and Change Management by Brian Olaf. Sorry if I'm oversharing. On cyber and security, we like to keep a safe, healthy, educational, fun environment. So we are zero toxicity, zero racism, sexism, bigotry, or just toxic content. So if you participate in that in our Discord or on our YouTube chat, you will likely get a timeout or a ban. If you want to take that up with the moderators, you can reach out to them on our Discord channel. Do it exclamation point discord if you're on youtube and that will give you the link to our discord where you can talk to the moderators and find out why they made that decision if i'm moderating sometimes i'm just not good at it so uh hit me up on discord and i'll apologize but the penetration testing student learning path includes these four courses penetration testing prerequisites we went through that it's going to cover a lot of your networking basics. I didn't go through the content. We just went through the labs here. The content's there. There's videos and slides and it'll get you there. Spent like the last 10 months updating a lot of this so that when the new PTS comes out, it's going to be all videos and all labs close to, I think we're over 35 labs right now. Me and Alexi Ahmed, uh, otherwise known as Hackersploit, have been working on this content for all that time. There's penetration testing preliminary skills and programming, which goes through some Python, some C Sharp, I believe, or C++, one of those C scripts, and then some Bash and PowerShell as well in there. We are down to the penetration testing basics section. This EJPT exam preparation is really just there to keep the VPN versions of the labs available to you, of some of the labs. That way you can practice for the current EJBT, which is still VPN access. And I think I've made hints at that. What we're doing with EJPT is going to be like what we're doing with the labs here, where you don't have to maintain your own machine. You don't have to worry about connectivity issues. It will work. And there's obviously some downsides to that, but for a junior penetration tester, it's going to teach you the skills. You're going to know how to actually do a lot of this work and you won't have to worry about maintaining your own VM because if you're not yet working, maybe you can't afford a computer that can stably run a couple of VMs or a powerful enough VM to actually do a lot of this. Um, your VPN issues, well, the let's call it uh, existing architecture for the VPN labs isn't great on the INE side and it's all being upgraded. It's part of why there was the acquisition of Pentester Academy to bring on their lab technicians, their assets and their instructors to create these environments that work great alongside their 
22,000 labs already on their platform that we're integrating here or that those folks, because they're good at making them, are helping us build out more. We covered cross-site scripting last week, did the cross-site scripting lab. You can catch that on YouTube. And I'm going to take all these labs, chunk up Java with Josh to just cover this lab in particular, and then throw it on the cyber and security or on the Joshua 17SC YouTube channels. But if you have finally caught up with the starter pass, logged in, that's why I'm killing time, so you can catch up if you need to, get access into here, and when you get to the SQL injection lab, just hit start lab. It's going to give us an overview. We're going to discover SQLI vulnerabilities and exploit it using the SQL map tool. SQL injection or SQL map, truth be told, I find as long as you're using words that people understand, then you're saying it the right way. GIF, GIF, I don't care. The creator made it one way, sweet. You want to say it one way, sweet. I don't care if those match. It doesn't matter. Our environment is going to be this Kali machine that we'll have access to through the GUI, through some guacamole awesomeness. And then we're going to be attacking or checking or testing demo.ine.local, which is also running on the same network. We'll be using BWAP and there's some login information. So we'll take advantage of that. We'll use SQL map, a browser and some burp suite. We currently have burp suite community edition in our Kali VMs that we use for attack here. But in the future, you might have what you might call a professional version or an enterprise version of that, that you don't have to pay for and maintain. It will be in our environment. Get excited for that. No one else is offering that. We have our walkthrough. If you are wondering what I'm doing, I'm going to go along with the walkthrough, the solutions. That way you can follow along directly as well. Also, it works. And that's what it's built for. You can pick whichever region. Okay, it's not showing the menu when I click on it. But right here above Start Lab, you can click there. And there's going to be US East, US West, EU, Germany, Asia, Singapore, and Asia, India. And I'm going to pick US East because it's like right down the road for me. And you can even pick your keyboard layout. That's one of the issues a lot of people have had using these labs is picking the wrong keyboard layout for their keyboard. If you are in a place where your keyboard is different than my keyboard, then you want to make sure that you pick the interface that works. That way your virtual environment matches your physical environment. All right, start this lab. It'll take a minute to update. Sorry. Throw my hand in your face. While this is going, um, just want to remind everyone that if you want to participate in questions while you follow along, hop on over to the YouTube channel, Cyber and Security. If you're on LinkedIn, I threw the URL to this stream in the description. If you're anywhere else, um, I think I put it in the description, how to get to the YouTube channel. And in five seconds, we will have this lab up and ready to go. So SQL injection is part of web app penetration testing. Share that screen. Here's our Kali GUI environment. There is a database offer called SQL, SQL. And you could have MySQL, you could have um, MS SQL. There's a lot of SQL servers. Um, and right now I can't think of what SQL stands for, but uh, sequential query language or something like that, um, serialized query language, doesn't really matter. It's a database. I am not a database manager. What I do know is that what you do is you make requests to the database and developers set up dashboards that will make these requests and it will pull data. So if you wanna see on Amazon, what all the products are uh, that match your query type. Well, you put in your query type and that goes spun into perhaps some sort of database entry. It might be SQL. 
and then it's going to show you content. Maybe if you're on Google, you're going to make a, a query. It's going to be sent to the database and then it's going to present you things. Structured query language. Thanks, BSEC. DJ BSEC, who helped me set up my music for the countdown. I hope you liked it. I liked it. And I haven't gotten any uh, monetization hits. So that's nice. We do have some ads on our channel. That is so that we can use money to then provide things to you, the community, our viewers, our, our friends on discord, on live streams, on our videos. We do do giveaways. We're going to do a giveaway tomorrow on T with a hacker. Yes, we are doing T with a hacker. Neil Bridges is going to be in the house and with big, exciting news. If you haven't seen his big, exciting news, it junkie on Twitter or Neil Bridges on LinkedIn or on Instagram or TikTok. He's been in a lot of places. So uh, Kibo Gaming asked a question. Hey, can you talk about the PTP course after the PTS? Sure, I can get into that. I'll save some time afterwards. Is that okay? But I'll talk about PTP and what's included in there. Note, though, that over the next few months, it's all going to change. Yeah. It's all going to change. It'll be great. You'll like it. Back to our lab. We have our IP address is this 192.104.181.2. Yours is likely going to be different. It'll be like 192.something.something.2. And we've got a whole network that matches that. I just replace the two with a zero. And we see that there is the dot three, which has an HTTP server running and also my SQL. Well, maybe my SQL. It's on 3306. We've also got our router, which has whatever access and then our machine. We can double check. We're going to ping demo.ine.local. It is the domain it gave us in the instructions. And that even aligns to the dot three. So with that, I'm not going to do more command line enumeration in this one because I know what the lab is about. We're going to go to demo.ine.local. I've explained in past uh, streams. All right, man. Um, how the IP address and the URL match together. This one is not secure and that matches because they're hosting it on 80. So it's not HTTPS. You might remember from the HTTPS lab what all that means. But we have login of B and bug. We need that for BWAP because it's going to give us access to all the vulnerable sections. Once we're in, see it says welcome B and you've got log out there. We'll go up to choose your bug. And we're going to do SQL injection get search and hit hack. So there is this infrastructure right here. Now, if you type maybe Joe and hit search, it's going to look up in the database something that matches Joe. Now let's see what that actually looks like when we send that request. Let's spin up burp to intercept. Open burp suite there, use foxy proxy, which in the lab environment is already set up for you. You just switch it over there. Sorry if that was loud, that click. I know it's out of date. It's out of date almost as soon as you install it. It's a joy of burp suite. They keep it up to date. It's wonderful. Don't worry. The lab's going to stay up to date. We've got a whole team on that. And the joy is we can update one and all of them update. It's magic. It's magic. Okay. Intercept is on. Let's try that again. We will search for Joe. We have this get request and it is passing the variable in the URL. And we've got a cookie down here for our session. 
and this remains because we've now logged in. So the cookie maintains our session as we're logged in so that we can keep using all the things that we need. It's if you log into Netflix or you can access all your videos, even if you click around the say, the the page or the site or the app. Same thing's going to happen on Amazon. Same thing's going to happen on INE or YouTube or LinkedIn. So that's all through cookies. These aren't third party cookies. They're just cookies utilized by the website. I'm going to try something. Let's send this to repeater. Hop on over to the repeater tab. And if we send it, huh. if we send it, then we can see, let's search for GI. Let's run line 94. I don't need all of this stuff. Around 94 is where we see this. Uh, And I can't remember what a TD stands for. But this uh, data table, yeah, table data, entry of GI Joe, Cobra Commander, all of that, and we see it here. So then if we were to change this so it's no longer Joe, we could make it like um, Hulk. Let's send that. And let's scroll down to like 94 and see if it found anything. Doesn't look like it. So what it's doing is it's sending a query. Now let's try to figure out what that query looks like. Usually you've got a query that looks like from, hmm, from the database or from the table, select, and then what columns or rows you want from that table. Now that's pretty neat. What is fun about the injection is there's certain characters that you can throw in there and they're going to add comments. They're going to add things into that query that the developers didn't want to happen because then it's going to We'll throw a logic, uh, logic equation in there, and it's going to not just what would have errored out. It's going to give us the whole table. So we do that. Do let me catch up in my notes. And by notes, I mean the walkthrough because uh, I want to do everything exactly how you can do it. If you go back and look yourself, I guess I will show you. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna port Swigger Academy and show you real fast what all of that looks like. You can make an account on Port Swigger Academy. This is all free training. It is not competition. We are also teaching this stuff in the in the content on INE, but it's also just here. Do, 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 do. SQL injection, just because I know the graphic is here. So you've got all this code on your website. Select name description from products where the category equals gifts. And usually like that gifts is what we're showing. So in our lab, it's going to be like select title, release, character, genre, and IMDB link from movies, from movies where category equals, and then in our case, Joe or Hulk now. And then union select username, password from users. So all of that information pops on over and it overshares here because this hacker threw in that, what is that, back tick? union select username and that right there is our injection you can get into more about sql injection there you can get more into sql injection from the ine content i'm just obviously in love with the slides on the current ine um 
but we're going to play with it here. So we'll utilize SQL map. So we've got SQL map and we just SQL map package. Introduce it to you. What it's going to do is Python SQL injection. So at least one of these options has to be provided. We'll use a URL and then we can specify some options for our target. And what it's going to do is it's going to try SQL injection and tell us if it works. And it's got a great database to check from. We can also add our own parameters and see what shows up. So I'll go back to my original tab where I started this. So SQL map on our URL, demo.ini.local, and it's this sql1.php, which matches up here, sql1.php, searching for, in this case, hello, and search, and that's not going to work because I didn't actually update this cookie. If you were to copy and paste right out of the instructions, it's not going to work. I wasn't thinking why I did it. You need this cookie, which is going to be exact to your session. So let's put that in there. PHP session ID equals, and then nine, nine ending in three, all the way through security level. So we'll check that cookie. Perfect. And what we're going to have it test is this variable title right here. So that's why we have a tag P title. So it's going to replace things in there to see if it will spit out more information than it's supposed to. And it's running. Yes, skip tests. Yes, just hit the default values. Until you know what you're doing with SQL map, if it asks you something, just go with whatever the default is. That's just hitting enter in my case. So it tells us the get parameter title is vulnerable. Do you want to test if others are? No, that's fine. I just wanted to test that one. Neat. So it tested it. It got back results that no, that showed that it was oversharing. And that's a good first step for us. So then what do we want to do? We want to test to see if there are, uh, well, how exactly it is uh, vulnerable. So I think we have our payloads here, yes. So title equals hello, and then it's got this, is that a single quote or a back tick? I'm just gonna copy it out of there, just to make sure. Union all select, null, 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 concat, this whole long thing, a bunch of nulls, and then like action equals search, which was part of the original URL. Let's grab one that is pretty clean, like here. And it is throwing some logic in there. So hello, and then this little guy enters in another like comment. So really it's gonna move your parentheses back so that it's either hello or not 624 or 6,247 equals 6,247, which is a true statement. So I don't know why this one works, but it's going to then spit out kind of the whole table. It's a neat, crazy thing about SQL and the logic there. But if we now replace title through search with Title equals hello. Actually, let me make sure I do that. Yeah. All right. There we go. Title through search into that request. Let's see what it does. We'll send it. Scroll down here to like 94 is where it was. Aha. Uh -huh. And it tells us you have an error in your SQL syntax. Check the manual that corresponds. So that's not awesome. It did something. It did something it wasn't supposed to do. 
we could try this other payload. I'm going to tell you now that these payloads aren't actually going to hit, but it's not going to do anything magical, rather. But we can at least see that it is doing something. It's responding in a kind of a fresh way. Again, you have an error in your SQL syntax down here on the bottom right. Okay, so it is taking it and it is evaluating the SQL, what we're passing it. It's not really doing anything useful. Let's now see what databases are present on the database server. So we'll use SQL map to pass something specific. And I need to update my cookie in here. After that cookie, we've now done title and we'll do DBS, tag tag DBS, and that will enumerate the databases. So we can have that run. And about, hey, there are four databases, BWAP, information schema, MySQL, and performance schema. So on the website, there are four databases. The databases are going to have different pages or different columns and rows. This is, I, I think of it as like different sheets on an Excel cell file. Um, databases are similar to that. It's not the same, but it's what I know. So I, I analogize for myself. Okay, so now that we know that there are those databases, what tables do we have? So I'll throw this guy in there. I can steal my cookie. Remember, we didn't have access to these pages where we could try out the injection without being logged in. So we have to keep this cookie so that it can act logged in. Because anyone can go to that page, but it's just going to show you, will you log in if you don't have a cookie set, I do believe. So on top of the tac tac DBS, we now have attack D for BWAP. We'll be looking at this database and we're going to see what tables exist. And we see that there's blog, heroes, movies, users, and visitors. I think originally we were probably pulling from movies when we were making requests. Well, that users one is quite interesting. What columns exist in the users database? Again, I'm copying out of the notes so I don't fat finger and we waste time watching Josh watching me type things over and over again. Wrong. I also like to copy and paste, make notes, and uh, use those as much as possible just to avoid those issues. So uh, we'll t send this one off. And we are now, if you missed it, what we added was on top of tables, the tag T and then users, and then a tag tag columns to enumerate what columns are on the table in the database BWAP. And here we go. We've got the different columns. So is someone an admin? Do they have email? What's their login? What's their password? What's their reset code? What's their secret? And what are the stored apps on the, uh, on the table, on the database. So is it a small character, a small int? Is it a variable, 100 characters long in this case? Knowing that that exists, why don't we get all the content from that table? Maybe let's find out what all the e password and emails are for everyone that's on that table. SQL map lets us map out nicely, quickly, all this information. And you could do this all yourself. I suggest you do this lab, make yourself a good notes page. And then if you come across something showing SQL, 
it's some sort of lookup like this, then you can go back and try out the SQL map commands based off of your notes. Notes from learning to take into labs, then to take to the real world are very important. Having your own, knowing how they work. There's a lot of great things out there like the Red, uh, Red Team Field Manual that has some has stuff in it already. Having your own version of that is great. Alongside notes like this page is vulnerable, like it's vulnerable and here's my proof of concept. Here's some screenshots. Here's like a video I did so that you can put that into your report, into your bug bounty report, into your pen testing report, whatever it is you're turning all over because we're not just doing this for fun, right? You need those notes as well. I use Joplin because I can put things in Markdown and it backs up to, uh, in my case, my one or my Microsoft OneNote. And I can send it across different VMs to my Windows machine to another laptop. And all I have to do is log in. And I have it there. Sorry, I didn't share what that command was. It was just adding a tax C for columns, admin, password, and email, and then tac tac dump to dump all the contact from there. And it found the table. Do you want to enumerate more? No. And crack the um, on the dic with the dictionary based stack? No. So it looks like there's only two entries. They both have admin, their passwords. Either this is hashed or that's a password. And there's your email. Pretty neat. Oh, it is hashed. So we'd have to break this hash. SQL map can do it. I don't know what it uses. But if you find hashes, pull them, save them, store them in your notes, keep track of them, and then probably not in your VM offline, uh, throw them through something like Hashcat or John the Ripper that can utilize all of your processing power. So that's neat. We were able to, through this website that had get requests, access the whole database, not just what it was intended to do, like it was only supposed to find that one um, table and show con or columns and information that was pre you know presented on that website, but because there wasn't any data validation or any backend um, whitelisting or validation, it overshares a whole bunch. That's not a great thing. We'll do the post as well, and then move on from there. So this one was through a get request, which means they pass the variables in the URL. I'm going to turn off the intercept. And try the other version here. SQL injection with a post. Now in this situation, it looks very much the same. If we search for Joe, we get, you know, GI Joe. If we searched for hello, we get no movies found, but our URL doesn't have any variables. So what is happening? Is it's passing it as variables in a post. If you're curious, if the headers, what we're looking at right here doesn't make any sense. We've gone through labs where I've explained all this previously in earlier version, in earlier episodes of Java with Josh. They'll be available on Cyber and Security channel as standalone videos for the labs and on uh, Joshua17SC's YouTube channel. That's me. But in this situation, it's a post. The variables are passed in the request, not in the URL but it works a lot the same. So let's get to just kind of the SQL map of what that looks like. Um, actually, let's send this over to repeater. So it is something that we recognize. So if we send it with Joe, we see down here probably around 94. We got the GI Joe, Retaliation, Cobra Commander, etc. If we were then to put in like, hello, 
Well, then in 94, it's probably going to have nothing. Yeah. No movies were found. And that's what it looked like here when we did that. No movies were found. Cool. So we will use this information, replace things in the title, and see what we get. I'll tell you, it is going to be vulnerable. So it's kind of just show what that does look like. Yeah, let me grab something from there. Then replace hello with Bring in this tag and select all this information from information schema dot plugins. We saw that that's one of the databases that we would find that there's a table called plugins and it's going to give us all that information perhaps. So let's send this request, let's see what that looks like. Scroll down to the 94 ish. And we see in here, where was it version? Concat, and there's version here. And in our request, we see 5.5.47 Ubuntu for 0 0.14.04. What is that? Let's go back to our end map of demo.any.local, IP3308, and tag SV. Yeah, there it is. And it's showing a TNS server. So not crazy useful. Let's do it to port 80. Do you believe this is going to show Apache on Ubuntu? Yeah. Apache on Ubuntu. We don't even see the SQL version. Instead, we were able to get it through this injection of asking for a version. So that's kind of neat. That's pulling out specific information from a table. Um, there is a little more in the lab that you can play around with if you want, but kind of shown how you can do it. Hopefully that makes the lab walkthrough a little easier. Okay, let's pop back over here. I'll stop this lab. So uh, while it's stopping and uh, prepare for the next one, um, was asked about PTP. PTP is pen testing professional. This is pen testing student we're going through. Pen testing professional gets into more OS specific attacks, gets into um, some buffer overflows, gets into using PowerShell more man in the middle, um, some social engineering, and it's a great course. It leads to the eLearn Security uh, Certified Professional Pen Tester Certificate exam, uh, the ECPPT. And right now that exam is a, I believe, three-day-long exam where you also turn in a lab report at the end, similar to other exams that are out there. And we have an instructor on staff who goes through each of those reports and gives feedback. And based on your grade, you either pass or you get one more attempt. You get a free attempt on all INE, all eLearn Security certs. But it's a pretty great course. The labs are all now in the PTA in this new um, browser-based lab environment. Alexi and I went through and made sure that all of those labs work. They do. and. They're pretty good. Once PTS gets launched and EJPT version two gets uh, launched, then we're going to get into PTP and uh, WPT will probably split up the work and start sending out new courses. That's not going to be a big, big grab like PTS is. We've been working on this one for almost 10 months now. 
and you're we're waiting to release until it all releases. That's not going to be the case with the other courses going forward. Once we update a course in the path, then that course will get released. We'll get into brute force and password cracking. There's a live one and an offline one because the lab was really big before and it just works really well this way. So let's get into password cracking live. My kids are heading out to the park and my dog's freaking out. Sorry if that is bothering you guys. I know it's bothering me. All right, so the lab is starting up. Any questions as we move along? Again, if you do have questions, please pop over to YouTube. The link is in the description on LinkedIn. If you're watching this on Jerry's stream or Simply Cyber, thank you for that. Or if you're watching it on uh, DJ Bisek on Twitch, thank you for joining in. We are... Our moderators and our live chat is really going on on the Cyber and Security YouTube channel. We host Neil Bridges for Tea with a Hacker and Old Guy Wednesday, and then just the Cyber and Security stream, usually on Monday nights or whenever it pops up, where Neil is hosting, a uh, former NSA hacker, uh, and CISO now at Query AI. That's no longer giving away his news. Devnil Zen asked, when is updated PTS being released? That is up to marketing. So um, I don't know. As soon as I know, you'll know. I promise. Especially Dev. Yeah. You know me. I keep no secrets. If I knew what the date was, you would know what the date is. Um. We also on cyber and security have right now, um, I want to say Brandon, Brandon's on Wednesdays with his show on Tuesday nights. Uh, we have doc Jade who's going through a Python, uh, study course. And then Friday nights we have Jack, uh, sec IT guy with tipsy cyber. Jack also runs Jack of all trades on Monday nights on his Twitch channel on sec IT guy where he. He helped me make that intro at the beginning and my background and my logo, which looks something like that up there. So in this new lab, it's all in one. We don't have different tabs here. We're going to use uh, run a dictionary attack on SSH using Hydra, Nmap scripts, and Metasploit. So we'll do it three different ways. We're going to brute force login to this Nmap service using a dictionary attack. So we'll find password of student using Hydra, using the dictionary user share word lists rock you dot text dot guzzball. We'll find the password administrator using Nmap scripts with a user share nmap nse lib data password list and we'll find the root using ssh login metasploit module with the user pass dictionary of user share wordless metasploit root user pass dot txt it's all spelled out in here if you get lost with me you can follow along again starter pass is free this lab is free even the browser based section of it it's all free Let's get into it. We'll look at our IP address. We are this 192.79.92.2. Yours is going to be 192.x.x.2. It Everyone has a their own environment in here, which is nice. I'm going to copy that in there. We can look at the whole network, see what we have to attack. Do, do, do. There's the dot one, which is the router. We've got dot three, which is our SSH server. And then dot two is us. 
So this is also demo.ine.local, which is good to know. So let's run further scans on demo.ine.local on 22, and we'll run service scan, which is going to be OpenSSH for Ubuntu. Fairly straightforward. Well, let's go the easy way and just SSH um, user at, or well, let's do Ubuntu. So root at uh, demo.ind.local. That's for fingerprints. Yes, that's fine. Um, I don't know. Password. Nope. Uh, password one, two, three. Password one, two, three, four, five. Nope, don't work. We get three chances with OpenSSH, and then it drops you. What I just tried was brute forcing, which is try something and see if it works. Uh, my six-year-old tried that with her Fire tablet behind like a, a paywall thing that was supposed to take your date or your birthday as a parent, and if you put in the right birthday then like you got access well it's not that hard for a kid just to put in some numbers and come up with six digits for a birthday of someone who is an adult so my daughter put in one two one two three four and it worked now that would make me like what 90 years old <laughs> almost um but you know what it works and that's brute forcing and trying something and seeing if it works I've got this rocky word list and it's currently compressed in a guzzball. So I'm going to use gzip tech D to unzip it because it's a giant, giant word list. Let's take a look at that actually. User share word lists rocky.txt and Do a grep tech w let's just like head it and we could tail it see it's just a list of a bunch of weird passwords and it came from a um a social network in germany i believe early on that was compromised and all the passwords of all of the users were taken from the Rocky social media platform. And now we've got access to all of these passwords that people have used and it's all, all unique. I think there's thousands of lines. It's a big one. So we're going to, instead of doing my password, password one, two, three, password one, two, three, four, we're going to try each of these passwords in there. And we're going to do it using a tool called Hydra. Now, this again. Hydra's neat. Doesn't want you to use it if you're in the military or secret service organizations, which I can tell you when I was in the military, we definitely learned how to use Hydra. So sorry about that, Hydra folk. But there's specific syntax for how to do it. And what it does is it brute forces fuzzing. In this case, brute forcing a login. So you can pass either a lowercase L and that's going to be a specific login an uppercase L for like a login file. If you have a whole list, lowercase P for a specific password or an uppercase P for a password file. It's like we're going to use rock you there. And I'll show you what it kind of looks like. So we have a lowercase L and we're going to see if there's a login for student and we'll do an uppercase P using this Rocky word list. And we are going to attack demo.ind.locals SSH service. So telling you that it's SSH, it's going to look for port 22 and that service. It'll know how to shape it and make it work. Um, and Brenke asked, do you prefer Rocky for everything or are there others that you prefer more? 
there's several and we're going to use a few different ones and map has a good list there's derb that has a good list metasploit has a good list we're going to take a look at the different ones rock you is huge but that's also the problem is it's huge um you could also create your own word lists if you do some information gathering on a target and you find out that they're a baltimore ravens fan and they also like the washington nationals and um they're also a Cubs fan for some odd reason, then you could throw versions of that into your word list. If you know that they've got a dog named Trixie and a cat named like Furball, like you could add those into the word list. You can, there's generators that you can take a basic one and leet speak it, replacing vowels or letters with, you know, digits. Um, and there's some randomizers to like tack additional things on there and create your own word lists. Uh, I think we are doing that. We have a whole whole lab on that in the updated PTS, or it'll be in PTP for sure. But I'm, I think Alexi did that on PTS for post exploitation. Oh no, he's doing encryption right now. So we've talked. That's going to be in the course how to make a great word list. But uh, in this case, it's going to be in Rocky because this lab's made that way. But Rocky is huge. So, uh, for example, I made a lab on TryHackMe just about a year ago. And one of the user or passwords is in Rocky, but it is so far down Rocky that it takes like an hour before it hits, unless you pick something specific. Like you could pull things out of Rocky based off of like a grep of a, or a regular expression and then use that new word list. So Hydra is going to run. I should have had it run before I was talking. Sorry about that. But I do believe it moves pretty quickly. So it's running with max of 16 tasks per server. And yeah, it's got, what is that? 14,344,399 logins to try. So it might take forever. I might come back to it. While it is running, let's try something else. We have another word list. Show you. For our Nmap script, we're going to use the SSH brute script with Nmap. Do some Nmap scripting engine type work. It's wonderful and fun. So while this is going, let's open a new tab and you can name your tabs if you want. Yep. It's still running. How long does it say? It's kind of, that's a long time. I don't know if it'll finish before we finish the lab. But let's put, we need, we need a couple word lists. So we'll make our user word list. So we'll echo and administrator put that into users at users boom administrator and then do nmap on port 22 against demo.ini.local the script is kind of all over the place. People like them being in a certain order. Truth be told, most um, most Linux tools don't care about the op order that you put things. Just as long as if you have a flag, then you got the um, the property that goes along with that flag right after it. So in this case, the script is ssh brute, and the script args are going to be using this uh, user database of root users, which we just made right there because we're in root and against demo.local. So it'll shoot off and it's trying administrator with all these different passwords. And it's pulling those passwords from its own database. And look, hey, it came across administrator sunshine. So what does that look like? SSH and administrator at demo.ina.local 
is why I copy and paste because my typing is horrendous. Do it fast enough, no one notice. And sunshine. And we're in. I'm administrator on demo.ind.local. And um, you can see that. Whatever. It's a restricted SSH shell, which is fine. That's not the point. Oh, okay, this one found it. Student and friend. So it's a really simple password. Looks like it was... Didn't show how far down friend was. But it worked pretty well. So we could try that. SSH uh, student at demo.ind.local. And friend. And we're in. This is brute forcing using some passwords or some uh, word lists. And that's two different ways. Hydra and then Nmap. They both have engines. You can follow the syntax of how they, they're used. The Nmap scripts, you do tac tac script. The name of the script, in this case, it was SSH brute. If you need to know what all the scripts are, they're either in the... Uh, NSE folder, an Nmap in binary, um, or you can go to the Nmap web page, and it shows all of the um, all of the scripts that are maintained whenever you do an update to your machine. It's going to if there's a new script added, it'll download that and include it in your library, and all the documentation usage is on their website. Really nice, great documentation for that. Oh, should have done this faster. Uh, okay. Like, it's not just, you don't just type Metasploit. <laughs> Take me a second. Metasploit Framework Console, MSF Console. And they always have this cute art at the top. There, this is a neat framework. I don't think I've covered it yet in and of itself. So this is the introduction. There are several different types of modules that Metasploit can utilize. There's exploit modules. There's like 2,193 exploits in this version 6.1.24, which I think is end of year 2021 when this uh, was all last updated. There's 1,100 auxiliary modules, which is what we're going to use. There's post modules, so once you have exploitation, there's modules that you can use to do things. Tons of different payloads, 600 of those, encoders, NOPs, and evasion. They can mix into your exploits, but it is a framework to build exploits out for use in pen testing and proof of concepts. We are going to use it's auxiliary scanner SSH and SSH login. And I type info. It tells us it's an SSH login check scanner. Created by Metasploit by Todd B. Yay, Todd B. And there's these variables for you to pass in. If they're required, then you need something in there. So like right now we don't have anything for our hosts. So let's set um, our hosts as demo.ind.local. And look over my notes. We'll set user pass file as user share wordless metasploit pre user pass.txt. Is there anything else on there that I need to use? We'll do stop on success true. That way it doesn't keep trying. It's like, oh, hey, we were successful once. We'll just keep trying things. No, no, no. Once you're good, you're good. Stop it. And then we'll set, and I just want to show how you actually do these things. Set verbose to true. And tab completion works. It's very useful because fat fingering 
type options just to make sure everything got in there I want, what, the way I want it to. I need uh, demo.ine.local, stop on success true, and verbose true. Okay. And you can either type run, you type exploit, depends on how elite you want to be. I'll do run this time. Now let's just try things. I tried root with nothing. Let's try and root root, root Cisco, root. It'll keep going. Don't think it takes too long. No, I already found it. Yeah, so root and attack. Exciting. SH root at demo dot dot local. Yes, I know I'm still in the Metasploit framework, but it's going to work. It's kind of cool. Hey, I'm root. And that's how we can use Metasploit, Nmap, or Hydra to brute force some logins. There are tons and tons of other tools to brute force. You can use GoBuster. You can do use uh, FF. You can use uh, Rust's um, Rust Scan or FarrowBuster. All of those will let you do a version of fuzzing that could be brute forcing. Some of them aren't as elegant as others, but they all tend to work. So that is brute forcing or password cracking live against a live target. We're going to stop this lab and let's do it against, uh, well, like offline is what they call it. It's going to be against some hashes that we find. And it's 9.33. We're not set up for a giveaway, Fraser. So I've got stuff, but I just didn't give you a heads up. So. Let's not do that. We will have a giveaway tomorrow. Neil told me to get something lined up. So I'll be giving. I just realized what else is tomorrow. I should have time to help out and mod for that giveaway before meet up with Stuns and Roses. This one's going to be password cracking offline using hash cat and Sean the Ripper. So we will get some passwords, use a word list to decrypt the hash. The way hashing works is you take something, you run it through an algorithm and you end up with a hash. It's a one way form of encryption because you can't take that hash and figure out, run an algorithm on it and find out what it started with. Instead, what we have to do is we, run against a word list, the same algorithm that was used to make that first hash until we find a match in hashes because each hash to a string is going to be unique. Well, there's some collisions depending on the algorithm, but a really good algorithm minimizes those collisions so that you don't have like the same input equaling the same output. And in here it says we'll use this 1 million password from sec lists again, uh, and Bricky, you asked for other good lists. There's on sec lists, there are tons of them. And if you've updated Kali, you should have sec lists, or you can do an apt install sec lists to get them all. Okay, open our lab, do allow me to copy and paste. I will be using that heavily. So it told us there's this word lists and 1 million passwords from sec lists. And maybe I should have opened it because it's a million lines of passwords. Not quite as many as Rockio. Is it just 1 million? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 10 million. 10 million passwords. So we, I guess, are going to look at our own info. So we're on Linux. Linux stores passwords and hashes in uh, the Etsy shadow. Well, 
and Etsy Shadow gives you usernames, some information about your hash, and then the hash. It's kind of neat. We've got an admin one. We've got a root one. So I think we are going to crack those. Yeah. So you saw that, you see that admin one down there, starting with TPJ, running all the way through PA70, capital P, lowercase a, 70. And that's what we will try to break. We'll try to get, or we'll try hashing a long user, uh, a long board list. See if we've come up with any matches, and then once we know what the what matches in the results, we'll know what to start with. And we'll use, I think, John the Ripper and then Hashcat to do that. Now we can check in this Etsy login.defs and see that we are encrypted using a SHA 512. This is specific to this machine. It's in our Etsy login.defs. Knowing what encryption method we're using is helpful. And I know that it's this one because it's not commented. SHA 256 and 512 created by the NSA as great algorithms and they are. So I need this line right here. It's the last line in Etsy shadow. So I'm going to use tail of the last line of Etsy shadow and copy that into admin hash. So let's cat admin dot hash. We have that line in a file. Now we need to clean it up. We need to get rid of the stuff before and the stuff after. To do it quickly, I'm just going to use nano admin.hash. Delete up to the colon at the beginning, and then delete up to this colon, control X, and then yes that name and now if I cat admin hash now it's just that hash from the dollar sign all the way to the forward slash though it all counts because it is dele delineated by these colons full colons not semicolons um yeah I think I should be done in time for you to make it the first things first with Gerald Osier on simply cyber I need to be done in time because he needs to go live so I need to end this now in like the next 10 minutes because I am totally stealing his channel right now. If you are watching us on Simply Cyber, thank you. Gerald is amazing. So we use Hashcat and we'll run uh, 1800 instances utilizing admin.hash and that word list, the 10 million word lists, to see if we find a match between the two. And it can take a while, but it's going to move, I think, pretty quickly. Should be like 30 seconds. Hashcat's neat. Um, it is very powerful, but it will take as much power as possible. It's like Google Chrome. And it is running those algorithms. It takes your word lists, it makes a hash of it, it comes up with a solution, and it checks to see if that solution matches your input. And while it's running, I'm going to set up John the Ripper in another tab. So in this case, we use John across all of Etsy Shadow utilizing that word list. Really straightforward, 
and it's going to get us some info because John is set up to know how to utilize Etsy shadow and the word list that we pass in. Go over to our other tab. Oof. This instant, oh man, Hashcat and John the Ripper might be too much. Uh, Devnol Zen asked if I'm going to Shmoo. Uh, currently, no. Um, Ine doesn't have anything running at Shmoo Con, and I know it's right down the road for me. Um, I might do a meetup with y'all if you want. If you're going to go to Shmoo Con, we'll hit, hit up, uh, I don't know, meet up on the Capitol somewhere. Because that's where I am going tomorrow. So I'll be down in the DC. All right. Wow. So John was pretty fast. John, we gave it as the shadow and the wordless and it ran like a beast. It came up with admin password being Foxtrot and root password being password, which isn't great. Hashcat is still running and yep, still running. It's powerful, but it's kind of going to take forever. Do I have more to show you than that? Sure, we could break up some other things, but I think that'll be good for today. Did it finally come up with it? Yeah, I cracked it. It's annoying to read. Where did I put it? Okay, box shot. This whole thing here is Foxtrot. Neat. I hope you enjoyed these three labs that we went through. Um, thank you for participating in chat. If you are on LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch, and you're like, wait, I've been putting in questions and Josh hasn't been responding to them. My mods are grabbing questions out of YouTube and sending them to me in Discord. If you want to participate in the chat, hop on over there next time. Um, I... Uh, instead of the beginning, if you came in somewhere in the middle, or if you just don't want to switch over to YouTube, sorry about that. Um, just trying to make as many ways for you to be able to watch. Tomorrow, Neil Bridges is going to be on live at 0830 Eastern on Tea with a Hacker. Uh, Tea with a Hacker, I'm not a, quite a hacker. That's why I do Java with Josh um, to cover more than that. But Tea with a Hacker is Neil's AMA stream. He's got some big news to share about his life, his new job as a CISO, uh, CISO, um, and what we're doing with the cyber and security channel tune in in 15 minutes for first things first, where Neil, uh, where Gerald is going to go through the headlines of the day from the CISO series podcast. And then later Jack Scott and Gerald both have interviews on their channels. Um, tomorrow we've got Jack back here on cyber and security doing uh, tipsy cyber at eight o'clock PM Eastern time on Friday. So a lot to tune in for with that. I'm going to call it a day and I will see you all in discord. If you need the link hat exclamation point discord on YouTube and the bot will be drop you that link. All right. You'll have a great day and a great week. And we are